Number 10, therapist notes. As Amber Heard continues to try and defend herself despite no longer being on the stand, she said she has therapist notes that prove she was a victim of mistreatment by Johnny Depp. She revealed the information in her tell-all interview and has already started receiving backlash in regards to it. She said, There's a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011, from the very beginning of my relationship, that was taken by my doctor who I was reporting the abuse to. The notes were originally not submitted into the trial as evidence, apparently due to fears of them being seen as hearsay. People on the internet seem to be accusing her of having written the notes herself. One person on the internet who claimed to be a therapist said, I was a therapist for a decade. I worked in child protection and DV and hospitals. Therapists never write like this. We use short form notes, underheadings, with lots of abbreviations and acronyms. And they're also pointing out similarities between Amber's own writing and the so called therapist notes. Many people see seeming to believe that the notes are totally fake. Number 9. 20k Airbnb After the verdict was reached and Amber was ordered to pay $10.35 million to Depp, many people were wondering how she would be able to pay him, especially when her lawyer Elaine said in an interview that her definitely didn't have the means to pay it. So people were shocked when they found out where she had been staying during the trial. It was revealed that she was staying in an over $20,000 a month mansion in Virginia throughout the court proceedings. It's touted as one of the most luxurious private estates in the area, being 13,000 square feet in total and just a 25 minute drive from the courthouse. Witnesses reported seeing her at the property alongside her sister and daughter, as well as her entire security team. So while her net worth and her lawyer's statements make it seem like she doesn't have much to spare, she might have much more than we're aware of. Number 8. Aquaman Struggles After Amber's reputation was all but destroyed thanks to the public Publics and social media's involvement in the trial, many people were left wondering if she would be dropped from the upcoming sequel to Aquaman, which had already been filmed. Amber's defenders touting this as a big point of how the trial had apparently ruined her life, and attacking those who had caused it to seem that way. Well, as it turns out, her potential removal from the sequel was not the public's fault as many would want you to think, but instead, her own. Amber herself revealed that her character wasn't even originally planned to be in the sequel, but that she had fought to have her character have a large role and be featured more prominently within the script. So as much as she might try to place blame on people on the internet for bullying her and ruining her career, she may want to just switch to movies that actually want her. Number 7. The Revenge Memoir In the aftermath of the defamation lawsuit, Amber is reportedly in talks to write a tell-all memoir that is said to be some kind of revenge book. Reports that the star is working on a multi-million dollar book deal have been circulating online for weeks. In fact, a report from Radar suggested that the prospect of a book has caused a frenzy in the publishing world, with negotiations reportedly in the region of $15 million. That would be a very nice payday for the actress given her dire financial situation. Many see it as a last ditch effort at making a little bit of money from the highly publicized case, and that it is. But aside from a quick money grab, she might genuinely need a lengthy book to tell her side of the story. I mean, she started dating Johnny back in 2012, and probably still a lot of details about their relationship weren't able to be addressed in the trial. The actress told Guthrie that she's terrified her ex-husband might sue her again, and it's true that she simply cannot afford the threat of another lawsuit. So Amber will need to be very careful about what she writes, considering she could end up right back in court. Number 6. Aquaman 2 it looks like Amber may still be appearing in Aquaman 2 after all, as the actress has furiously denied reports of her being cut from the sequel. Apart from trying to save face, one of the reasons is of course money. During the trial, entertainment expert Catherine Arnold testified that Amber was fighting for her life to be in the film, and was paid a whopping $2 million to star in the sequel. That's double the salary she received for the first installment. The movie would have been a really sweet gig for her considering her reported net worth and how much she still owes Johnny. She's really trying to stay in the DCEU because those movies pay extremely well compared to the kind of indie, art house films that she's managed to get throughout her career. So it's no surprise that she's holding on to her role as Mira with tooth and nail. Even Amber's spokesperson shut down the claims that she's being recast. 
quote, the rumor mill continues as it has from day one, inaccurate, insensitive, and highly insane. In fact, she testified that because of Johnny's smear campaign against her, she was given a new script for Aquaman 2. Quote, they basically took a bunch out of my role, claiming that her character now only appears in 10 minutes of the film. Number five, the luxury mansion. Everyone was shocked when multiple reports began to emerge that Amber was staying in a luxury $22,500 a month mansion during her legal battle. It was really crazy when you think about her so-called financial situation and promises to charity. The 13,000 square foot property was a whopping $22,500 a month. Meanwhile, she still has not been able to donate the funds that she promised. And she said this is because her ex-husband was suing her. Everyone was really confused about how the actress was able to afford it, especially after the verdict was handed down and she was ordered to pay Johnny over $10 million in damages. The mansion, which is only a 25 minute drive from the Fairfax County Courthouse, sits on an acre of land and has eight bedrooms, including a tennis court, a home movie theater, and a pair of sweeping staircases in the entryway. Not only that, but its listing on Zillow describes it as one of the most distinctive and private estates offered in McLean. So it looks like she was not being entirely truthful about her finances at all. Number four, new movies. The actress already has not one, but two films lined up following her loss in the defamation lawsuit. So in some ways, it looks as if the 36 year old is still winning, considering that she can still call herself a working actor. Macro reports that just before the trial commenced, Amber had just finished filming her upcoming movie called In the Fire. The film is set in the 1800s and Amber will be playing a North American psychiatrist who heads to a remote plantation to take care of a boy with special abilities. But the plot thickens as a psychiatrist tries to find a scientific explanation for the boy's abilities and she faces backlash from the small religious town. The film was directed by Connor Alien and does not yet have a release date. Not only that, but she's also set to star in another movie called Run Away With Me. According to IMDb, the film is about an American in Paris who falls in love with the model and they then discover the criminal underworld of the modeling industry. Both premises sound interesting, but they'll be buried in controversy by the time they get released. Although no doubt Amber herself will have made bank from the movies. Number three, secret notebook. It seems more secrets could be coming out thanks to one trial viewer's so-called secret notebook that they auctioned online. They had a notebook that they wrote in from days 23 to 26 of the trial, which wrote down everything from jury reactions, Johnny's interactions with his lawyers, and even Amber's actions within the courtroom. The notebook seems to have sold for a whopping 14,000, with all the profits being said to be donated to a children's hospital. Let's just hope they mean donated and not pledged. As cameras can only show us so much, these writings may give us an insight into Amber and her actions throughout the trial that we outside were unable to see. Though we may never find out, as the sale of the notebook came with the stipulation that it could not be photocopied or reproduced in any way. So we just have to wait and see if the buyer feels like sharing the contents with us. Number 2. Donation One massive bombshell that actually came during the trial was that of Amber Heard's quote unquote pledge to the ACLU. When Amber Amber received $7 million from her divorce from Depp, she pledged to split the money between the ACLU and the Children's Hospital Los Angeles, saying that she would split the payments up over a few years. Up until the trial, they had only received around $1.3 million in separate installments, $100,000 of that actually coming from Johnny, and $500,000 coming from a separate account that many people believe to have been controlled by Elon Musk, whom Amber Heard had dated after she split from Johnny. So despite saying she had donated the money, she was lying through her teeth the whole time, attempting to defend herself by saying that she used the word pledge and donate synonymously. Well, you'd be the only one to do so, Amber. This was a massive part of the trial as it called into question just how many other things Amber might be trying to hide. Secrets out, Amber. You're not so great at keeping secrets. Number 1. Bruises One main point of the trial was when Amber Heard testified to having had bruises and injuries as a result of Johnny Depp many people accusing her of having used makeup in order to create the illusion. But she strongly testified against this, until she didn't. Her even accidentally referring to the makeup kit she used to quote unquote cover the bruises as a bruise kit. Many people took to social media and more specifically TikTok in order to break down what she had been saying and expose her for lying. First coming for the method she described having used to cover up the bruises, which was entirely incorrect and out of order. But the final nail in the coffin of 
of this lie came when people looked at photos, which showed the supposed makeup palette she had referenced using. People were able to find the exact palette that she had been using, which is literally sold as and called a theater bruise and abrasion kit. Looks like the lying cat's out of the bag on that one. Number 10. Criticize social media. Heard spoke about the role that social media played in the trial and emphasized just how much the internet supported Johnny Depp, saying, quote, even if you think that I'm lying, you still couldn't look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media there's been a fair representation. And it's pretty clear what she's referring to. It's true that on TikTok, people have overwhelmingly shown their support for the Pirates of the Caribbean actor. In fact, the hashtag Justice for Johnny Depp has around 20 billion views on TikTok, while hashtag Justice for Amber Heard only has 80 million. Hashtags like Amber Heard is guilty has over 900 million views on social media, so it's not unreasonable for her to call the social media frenzy surrounding the trial as unfair. But it's another thing entirely to claim that this influenced the jury's decision. Number 9. Claim she wasn't acting. When Guthrie asked Heard about the accusations in court that she was acting on the stand, she fired back, saying, quote, says the lawyer for the man who's convinced the world that he had scissors for fingers. I'm the performer? It's obvious she was referring to Depp's role as Edward Scissorhands here, but the way she worded the response was really quite funny. What she was trying to insinuate is, Depp is the one who is an award-winning actor, so if anyone was capable of performing on the stand, it would be him. Heard followed it up by saying that she had to listen to weeks of testimony, saying quite directly that she's a terrible actress. So she's a bit confused about how she could be both. The question was obviously a very touchy one for her, as at the end of the trial, Depp's lawyer, Camille Vasquez, accused her of faking tears, calling the actor's testimony the performance of her life, even going on to reference Heard's acting coach, Christina Sexton, who said that she had difficulty crying when acting. Number 8. Admitted to her mistakes In what sounded like a moment of real accountability for Heard, she admitted to Guthrie that she has so much regret about the way that she and Depp treated each other during their relationship and about where they ended up. She also described their dynamic as toxic, saying, quote, it was ugly. It could be very beautiful. And in a moment of genuine admission, she went on to say, quote, we were awful to each other. I made a lot of mistakes, but I've always told the truth. When Guthrie brought up the idea that she lost the case because she didn't own up to anything, Heard clarified that she did do and say horrible, regrettable things throughout her relationship, and that she behaved in a horrible, almost unrecognizable way, and that she has so much regret, adding that she freely and openly and voluntarily talked about what she did. This was a really bizarre moment in the interview because Heard seemed like she was trying to come clean about at least part of the role she played in the disintegration of their relationship. Number 7. Jury's Opinion One story that came out immediately after the trial was that that of an apparent juror who had taken to TikTok to share their experiences of being present in the courthouse. It appears that while Amber may have felt her performance on the stand was great, even though she couldn't get any tears out, people saw right through her, and the secret's out that she's maybe not a very good actress. They said that from the very beginning, they had a feeling that something was off about Amber, and that everything she was saying just had the aura of being untrue. We all saw during the trial the way she would sniffle with dry eyes, looking towards the jury to try and gain their sympathy. But the TikTokers said that they had seen right through it, and the constant eye contact and pleading had just made them all very uncomfortable, ultimately finishing it off by saying, Amber Heard, what a crazy woman. Even her old acting coach said that when Amber was acting, she was never able to make herself cry. Number 6. The NBC Tell All People eagerly awaited Amber Heard's interview on NBC Dateline, where she was apparently going to reveal her side of the story. But as with everything surrounding the trial, the piece was immediately met with controversy controversy and backlash, the majority of it coming from a small editing choice. When speaking out about people in toxic relationships, she said that they, referring to people in toxic relationships, don't have the resources you or I do, explicitly excluding herself from the group of people in bad relationships. They obviously realized their mistake as when it was released, they edited this out, and they didn't get away with it. People said things like, hashtag Amber Heard's new interview is exactly why the trial needed to be televised, live, and unedited. The full Dateline interview actually edited out the slip up about the resources she has that DV victims don't. Another fact about the interview was that she had received all the questions beforehand and had been allowed to make any editing notes to help portray their narrative. Number 5. Using 
Johnny's children. With the trial finished and no onslaught of new information coming out every day, people were finally able to look back over the previous days and really dissect what had been said in the trial, and even what happened in the years leading up to it. One thing that many people realized and chose to call Amber out for was her apparent manipulation of Johnny's children, and how it seemed that she had purposefully used them against him. She would often criticize Johnny's abilities as a father, saying that they needed to be raised by a real man, and as a result, the children should be raised by their stepfather instead of him. Johnny has constantly made statements about how he tries to do everything for his kids, and said that his main reason for pursuing the trial was for his children, so this had to have been a big emotional hit for him. She also used the children often in the trial against him, claiming that she had been standing up to Johnny in defense of the children, but a lot of people see this as just having been a planned move by Amber. Number 4. Moving on During and since the trial, Amber stated many times that she always just wanted to move on from the situation and never wanted any of it to go public. Well, secrets out, Amber. It was revealed in one of her writings that she had often threatened Johnny with a large media fiasco and constantly held the chance of things going public over his head throughout their relationship. She also constantly mocked, teased, and called him out over the years after their divorce, people citing social media posts which they believe were clearly in reference to Johnny Depp. Well, it seems like she definitely got her karma as her threats to go public public came very true, and it all turned out very bad for her. The cyberbullying and hatred that she has received online seems to just come as an unfortunate result of her getting what she wanted, that being the world knowing the truth. Number 3. Blames Jurors Regarding the jury being influenced by the social media circus surrounding the trial, Heard said, quote, I think even the most well-intentioned juror, it would have been impossible to avoid this adding that she thinks the jury is not immune to seeing how the vast majority of this trial was played out on social media. She also believes that this trial was an example of social media gone haywire, and that it would have been impossible for an unsequestered jury to avoid this. Although the jury was instructed to stay off social media, Heard's legal team insisted that it impacted the case. Bredhoff told Guthrie, quote, There's no way they couldn't have been influenced by it and it was horrible. It was really, really lopsided. But this is all in response to an appearance from Depp's attorneys, Benjamin Chu and Camille Vasquez, saying that there was no reason to believe the jurors violated their oath by engaging on social media. The truth is, there's really no way to know for sure. And number two, discredits the audio tapes. Speaking about the alleged domestic violence in their relationship, Heard said, quote, I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. When you are living in violence and it becomes normal, as I testified to, you have to adapt to it. But Guthrie pushed back, saying that Heard spoke of starting fights on recorded audio. And Heard said, quote, I know how much has been made of these audio tapes. They were first leaked online after being edited. What you would hear in those clips is not evidence of what was happening. Guthrie continued by reading some of the transcripts, to which Heard hit back, quote, As I testified on the stand about this, when your life is at risk, not only will you take blame for things that you shouldn't take blame for, and claiming that the 20 second clips are not representative of the two or three hour conversations they came from. But when Guthrie asked her why she hadn't submitted the full recordings, she just said, I'm not a lawyer. And coming in at number one, she maintains her story. When Guthrie heard about her testimony in court, Heard said, quote, to my dying day, I'll stand by every word of my testimony. And when Guthrie asked her about the fact that Depp denied that he ever hit her, and if that statement was a lie, Heard said, yes, it is. Ending the interview, Heard said, quote, I made a lot of mistakes, but I've always told the truth. I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. And with that, it seems like she has chosen to maintain her version of events and the allegations that she's made about her ex-husband Johnny Depp. Just how long she decides to stick to her story is something only time will tell. Number 10, her assistant's paycheck. This is a great way to start off the list because it goes to show you just how stingy Amber Heard was with money. She refused to pay her former assistant the salary that she was entitled to and proceeded to bully her when she spoke up about it. 
I'm talking about Kate James, of course, who was her assistant for three years between 2012 to 2015. She reportedly came with nearly 10 years of experience working with A-list celebrities, but started working for her as a part-time employee to have a bit of a flexible schedule to care for her son. She had several duties from grocery shopping, picking up her dry cleaning, to talking with her Hollywood agents and seeing her overall workflow. She was even asked to collect two copies of any magazine that featured her on the cover and store them in the garage. She was doing all of this for $25 an hour, which was less than half of what she should be making as a celebrity personal assistant. When she became full-time, Amber gave her a salary of only $50,000 and reportedly screamed at Kate when she tried to negotiate it. How about just paying your employees a living wage? Number 9. The Empty Pledge Undoubtedly, one of the craziest moments in the trial was when Terence Doherty, the General Counsel and Chief Operating Officer of the ACLU, testified about what really happened to the money Amber pledged. He revealed in a recorded deposition that the actress only donated $1.3 million of the $3.5 million that she pledged to the organization from her divorce settlement. So if we rewind a little bit, when Johnny and Amber reached a divorce settlement back in 2016, the actress announced that she would donate the entirety of her $7 million divorce settlement to charity, half to the American Civil Liberties Union and half to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. So this means that the ACLU should have received $3.5 million, but Mr. Doherty said that they only received four donations which totaled $1.3 million. The catch is that only one of those payments was from Amber directly. To make matters worse, when she took the stand and was questioned, she told the court that she used the word pledge and donate synonymously, which revealed that she didn't really intend to make good on her promise and most likely just did it for publicity. Number 8. Her Yucca Valley Home Amber revealed during her testimony that she currently resides in Yucca Valley, California. The unheralded town in California is 120 miles east of Los Angeles, and it's not the obvious choice for an actress who would probably need to live close to the city for work. But the purchase of the massive property becomes interesting when we look at when she bought it. According to an investigation by Dirt, Amber's name does not appear on the deed, but research points to a mysterious trust with clear links to the actress. The trust quietly bought the six-acre estate in early 2019, three years after she pledged $7 million to charity. The property was bought for $570,000 roughly a year before the coronavirus pandemic sent desert home prices soaring. So now it's valued at over $2 million. The custom home offers an attached three car garage and nearly 2,500 square feet of living space. But the fact that it wasn't bought under her name and purchased three years after she promised the money to charity is really sketchy. Number seven, talks about the First Amendment. When asked about people's reaction to the trial, Heard brought up the issue of free speech and claimed that the defamation case was bigger than just the two of them, saying, quote, this is not only about our First Amendment rights to speak, but Guthrie had a quick comeback, saying while the First Amendment protects speech, it doesn't protect lies that amount to defamation. But Heard really pushed back, saying, quote, it's freedom to speak truth to power. And according to her, that's exactly what she did and paid the price for it. She then went on to say that if she went into a theater and yelled fire, it would also be considered free speech, even though there would be severe consequences for doing that. She also claimed that truth is what she was really after all along and only wanted the liberty to express it. It's not very hard to catch on to what she was saying here, that the verdict of the trial was indicative of a larger systemic issue surrounding free speech. Number six, brings up the UK trial. When referring to the UK trial that Depp lost, Heard said, quote, there was another trial that dealt with the same substantive issues and had even more evidence in. In fact, my evidence was largely kept out. She then went on to claim that because the decision was made by a jury and not by a judge, Depp's defense team was easily able to influence them. While it's true that a London court rejected Depp's defamation lawsuit, Camille Vasquez pointed to the fact that the evidence presented in the US trial far exceeded what was presented in the UK court. She also explained that it was a different process entirely, 
because in London, Depp's lawsuit was against The Sun, which is considered to be the biggest tabloid in the country. But his lawsuit in Virginia was against her directly. Vasquez added that at this time, she believes the jury got it right. While it's impossible to find out exactly which pieces of evidence were suppressed, as Heard claims, she clearly does not want anyone to forget the fact that she won in the first trial. Number five, criticizes his supporters and fans. Heard also confessed to Guthrie that she felt less than human during her defamation trial because of the overwhelming outrage against her by Depp's fans. Quote, every single day I passed for three, four, sometimes six blocks, city blocks, with people holding signs saying, burn the witch and death to Amber. What she's talking about, of course, with the hundreds of protesters waiting outside the courtroom. She added, quote, after three and a half weeks, I took the stand and saw a courtroom just packed full of Captain Jack Sparrow fans who were vocal, energized. When Guthrie asked her how that felt, she called it the most humiliating and horrible thing that she's ever been through and that she has never felt more removed from her own humanity. It must have been surreal to see that Johnny Depp fans who were once cheering her on at the red carpet were now yelling and jeering at her. But what did she expect? The court proceedings were broadcast live on TV throughout the six-week trial, which of course attracted crowds of in-person admirers, most of whom supported her ex-husband. Number four, admits he had better lawyers. When Guthrie asked whether or not Depp had better lawyers and if that led to the US trial playing out differently, Heard said Depp's lawyers, quote, certainly did a better job of distracting the jury from the real issues. An official spokesperson for Heard explained why it was that she decided to come on NBC. Quote, Johnny Depp's legal team blanketed the media for days after the verdict, with numerous statements and interviews on television, and Depp himself did the same on social media, going on to criticize the fact that Depp's lawyers have appeared on Today and Good Morning America for interviews following the case. Heard's spokesperson called this behavior, quote, unseemingly and unprofessional, and said that they were doing a victory lap for setting back decades of how women can be treated in the courtroom. But even Heard's lawyer, Elaine Bredhoft, said that there were some things that her team wished they could have done differently. She added that she thinks the atmosphere of the trial was what played the ultimate role. But hey, the money was probably nice too. Number two, affair with Elon Musk. If you're gonna cheat on your millionaire husband, might as well do it with a billionaire, right? Well, at least that seems to be the kind of logic Amber used when she was seeing Elon Musk while she was still married to Johnny. The two dated publicly after her divorce, but Johnny testified that they started seeing each other much earlier than that. The legal documents read, quote, unbeknownst to Mr. Depp, no later than one month after his marriage to Miss Heard, she was spending time in a new relationship with Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk. So while Johnny was out of the country filming in March of 2015, building staff testified that Amber had the tech billionaire over late at night in their shared penthouse. In fact, she specifically asked the staff to give Elon access to the building's parking garage late at night. They also saw him leaving the building the next morning. Maybe they just had a pillow fight, who knows? But she certainly has a very distinct taste when it comes to men, which comes in handy when she really needs to keep up her lifestyle. The appeal. One of the biggest ways Amber was going to get her money back rested on the appeal. But now it looks like Judge Penny, who presided over the high profile case, has rejected that. Amber's defense team recently filed documents requesting a new trial on the basis of improper juror service. Basically, the judge dismissed claims that an individual juror had not been properly vetted and said the court remained bound by the jury's competent decision. The 43 page memorandum argued that Johnny's defense team team used poor legal reasoning and that the damages awarded to him were excessive. But most shockingly, her team alleged that one of the jurors who served during the trial was not properly vetted, specifically juror number 15, pointing to the fact that their birth year was listed as 1945, but according to other information, he appears to have been born around 1970. Elaine Bredhoft, Amber's attorney, also insisted that her medical records were suppressed and that a number of things were allowed in court that should not have been allowed, which caused the jury to be confused. It looks like this didn't really work out for Amber either because a successful appeal was almost impossible to begin with. So maybe it had a little more to do with getting out of the money that she still owes Johnny. 